Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today it's time to go through my April reading stats for you, so I'm very excited because I do like making these videos. So without further ado, I'm just gonna get into it. I finished a total of 11 books in April. That was from 11 different authors. Some of these have been on my TBR for a really long time and a good portion of them were ones that I was reading for or related to stuff I've been doing at uni and I just managed to finally get through them. The longest book that I finished was one page longer than the next longest, so the longest book that I finished was A Rupert at the Gates by Salba Tahir. I've already taken this back to the library so I'll put a picture up of it. This is the third book in the Ember in the Ashes series and was a good contribution to that, so that was 460 three pages and the shortest book that I finished was What White People Can Do Next by Emma Beery, which is 158 pages but it packs a punch, it fits a lot into those 158 pages and is definitely worth a read. This just came out and was gifted to me by someone through the Big Green Bookshop Buy a Stranger a Book Day. Very grateful to them for <laughs> giving me this book, it was definitely worth the read and I really do highly recommend it. So in total the number of pages on all the books I finished in April came to three 3,355 which was actually a little bit more than March even though none of the books were as long as the longest books I read that month. I guess the average length was 305 pages so I must have read just more long books. I mean three of the books were over 400 pages. None of the books were over 500 pages though so that meant I earned a pound per book giving me a total of 11 pounds of earnings in April which was not enough because we were allowed to go into shops again in April and and that maybe slightly had a slight impact on my spending habits. I only went to charity shops, I didn't go into any actual proper bookshops and yeah I ordered a couple of books online as well. I didn't necessarily mean to spend any money on books because I know I've got a couple of pre-orders coming out in May so I hadn't planned to buy any and then we were allowed to go in bookshops and I couldn't resist and there were good reasons for the other two that I bought online as well. I'm just gonna tell you what I bought and how much I spent because none of them were very expensive. So I bought After the Fire by Will Hill, I got this in a charity shop for £2. This is a nearly brand new copy, it's slightly bashed around the corners but you can see there's no marks on the spine so I don't think it'd been read and it was actually in cellophane. There was a split in the cellophane so someone had taken it out but I think it's practically brand new and this cost I think it was 199 it was either 199 or two pounds so I put it down as 199 it's only a penny different. This I picked up because I heard my friend Justine talking about it on her podcast a while back and it had stuck in my head as something that I'd probably find interesting so I'm really really looking forward to picking that up and actually she was really excited when I told her I bought it. The next one I'd seen it the first day that I went into the charity shop the day that I bought After the Fire and hadn't bought it and then I couldn't stop thinking about it and then I needed a little bit of a boost one day I needed to cheer myself up so I thought I'd go back and get it. So this was the interesting narrative by Oluda Equiano, probably saying that wrong, this was £2.50. He was kidnapped in Africa at the age of 11, this was in the 18th century, and made into a slave and then eventually managed to purchase his freedom and then campaigned for abolition. I heard about him in David Olusoga's Black and British History and had been wanting to pick this up so I was really pleased when I saw it, this cost me £2.50. The next one that I bought was because I'm taking part in the Space Trilogy read-along hosted by by Victoria from A Musical Bookworm and we've read the first two books in April, we're reading the third one, That Hideous Strength, in May and someone suggested that a good non-fiction work of C.S. Lewis's that goes along with That Hideous Strength is The Abolition of Man. I'd been meaning to pick this up, someone actually recommended it in one of my lectures back in the autumn and I tried to buy a second hand copy and they sent the wrong book and then didn't have another copy of The Abolition of Man. They let me keep the one they sent by accident which was another C.S. Lewis one which was fine. But then I managed to find this one online. This is a, I think it must be a print order one. I was a little bit surprised. I expected it to look like a regular book rather than this like kind of big flimsy A4 thing, but never mind. So this one was 5 99 That was the cheapest I could find it anywhere. But yeah, so I picked that up to read alongside that hideous strength. So I should be reading this in May anyway. And then finally, this was actually the first one I ordered, but it must have been out of stock because it nearly didn't actually arrive in April at all. Nearly didn't make it onto this list. So I bought The Land of Yesterday by K.A. Reynolds. I've been following her on Twitter for quite a while and she sadly recently lost her husband to cancer after, I think, quite a hard battle. In situations like that, there's very little that you feel you can do as a reader that just follows an author online. I hadn't read any of her books. It'd been on my wish list for a while. So I decided one way of showing my support would be 
need to buy one of her books. This was the one that had intrigued me most of all the blurbs. It's middle grade I believe. It sounds like a really lovely story and this cost me £4.99. So I spent about £15 I spent on books in April which was more than I meant to. I earned £11 so that was already a deficit and if you remember from my March stats I was already in the red. I was minus £8.88 at the end of March so that leaves me at the end of April on minus £13.35. I do have two pre-orders arriving in May. I did debate cancelling them but they're both authors that I really want to support for different reasons so I've decided I'm going to keep those pre-orders even though it's slightly irresponsible of me when I am in a minus in my budget and they are both hardbacks so they're both going to be over £10 each. I mean realistically I'm going to be having to read over 20 books in May to have any hope of being back in the black by the end of the month but we'll see how that goes. I mean I'm part way through quite a lot of books already and a couple of them are over 500 pages so we'll see how that goes. I did cancel the pre-order I had for June because it was the next book in a series and I realised I wasn't going to be up to date in time. That will give me a bit more breathing space and if you've seen my TBR I mentioned that I have some time off at the end of May finally after a really long and busy year. I have about 10 days off between handing in my essays, we've got a week of summer lectures and then we start summer placement at the beginning of June so I have a little bit of time that will hopefully allow me to get a lot of reading done. So anyway, look forward to seeing in May at the end of the month how I've got on <laughs> with trying to recoup some money in my budget. Let's press on though with the, the stats. The book that I read that was written the earliest was Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis. This was first published in 1938. This is the first book in the Space Trilogy that I picked up for that Space Trilogy read-along that Victoria's hosting. Really enjoyed. I just finished the second one actually. I didn't quite finish it in April. I finished it at the beginning of May um, and I've really enjoyed the live shows for that so I'm looking forward to the third book although I've heard it's much more dense and more difficult to get through. Then I read two books that were published in 2020. The Gilded Ones which was our book club book for March. I finished just at the beginning of April and for What White People Can Do Next which only came out a couple of weeks ago. In terms of ratings I gave one book three stars, seven books four stars, three books five stars and I also DNF'd one book which is rare for me. I was about halfway through it and we'll talk a bit more about that later. The book that I read the quickest was A Kind of Spark by L. McNichol. This came in the spring ninja book box and I've been meaning to pick it up for ages and I'm really glad I did. It was absolutely brilliant. I read it pretty much in one sitting. I just needed something that was going to be contemporary and a bit light and I'd say an easy read. It covered some some really difficult themes in there but in a really sensitive way. This is a middle grade book and it is about a young woman called Addie who is autistic. It is told from her perspective. Elle McNichol herself is autistic. It was a really good insight into how that feels. I think she's 11. She may be a little bit younger than that. She's still at primary school so she's maybe yeah, 9 or 10. I can't remember her exact age. And her older sister is also autistic so it talks a lot about how they react differently to stuff. She finds out one day that her town killed a lot of women during the witch trials back in the past and she wants to form some sort of memorial for them and so it was a really really good book and I really highly recommend it. The book that took me the longest to read was one I was reading for uni which I finally finished. So this was The Theology of Liberation by Gustavo Gutierrez. I'd been reading this on and off for a couple of months so it actually took me about 232 days to read in total. I read it for a bit and then I stopped reading it for a bit and then I started up again. I kind of tried to calculate how long I thought it had actually taken me because I didn't have it accurately <laughs> listed on Goodreads and I think it it was about 232 days so good to have finally finished that one because it was quite hard going at times. So that gave me an average reading length of 54 days which is a little bit longer than I would usually like but there was another book as well that I've been reading for quite a long time so it was good to finish some of those. And then in terms of how long books have been on my TBR there were a couple of books that I started reading pretty much straight away. One was a library book and one was a non-fiction that I was buddy reading with a friend and I'd started reading it pretty much straight away when I got it. The book that had been on my TBR for the longest was Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis and that had been on my TBR for 1,315 days. So that gave me an average length on my TBR of 270 days which is good. I like that to be less than a year which shows a good balance of reading older books and newer books 
but probably need to read some more of the older books on my TBR, I haven't been prioritising them as much recently. Four of the books were on my published TBR for April and the rest weren't, but that was because quite a few of them were for uni or I was finishing ones that I've been reading for a while. Four of the books were new this year, four books were from my own TBR and three books were library books, so that is a really good balance, apart from the fact that I didn't get to any review books this month. I like that as a, as a balance that is fairly solid. One book was hardback and the rest were all paperback. And then in terms of genres, so I read three Christian non-fiction books, mostly again were ones I was finishing off for uni, one contemporary, two fantasy, one inspirational romance, which is kind of like the Christian publishing wing of Romance Landia. You'll hear me talk more about this in future videos. Two non-fiction and two science fiction. One book was for the children's market, two books were young adult and then the rest were adult books. And then for publishers I read quite a mix this month but actually was slightly heavier on the indie this month which was good so it was six books from indie publishers and five books from the big five. So read a fairly good range of author nationalities, I read four books from Americans, four from British writers, one book was by an Irish Nigerian author, one book was by a Peruvian author and one book was from a Sierra Leonean American. And then for ethnicities, one Irish West African, one Latin American, one South Asian American, one West African American, three white American and four white British. So that gave me four books from authors of colour and seven books from white authors. So not too bad, I need to try and keep reading more from authors of colour. For genders, four of the books were from cisgendered men and then seven were from cisgendered women, so again need to be reading more from marginalised genders. For my challenges, I did not do brilliantly this month, I'm not gonna lie. One book I read was translated from the Spanish and then one book counted towards Read Around the World, which was the Gilded Ones because the author was originally from Sierra Leone, now lives in America, so she was the Sierra Leonean American. But because this was heavily inspired by her Sierra Leonean heritage, it counts. And she was born there. So yeah, didn't do very well on any of my other challenges, hoping to address that a little bit in May. For author diversity, four books were from authors from marginalised ethnicities, one book was from an author from the LGBTQIA plus community, one book was an author with a disability and one book was from an author with neurodivergence, so I didn't read any books by authors who have talked openly about mental illness in their lives this month. And then for character diversity, I did hit all the markers this month, so that was marginalised ethnicity, LGBTQIA+, disability, mental health and neurodiverse. I didn't read as many from each of the categories as I maybe usually would, but that was partly because I was reading quite a lot of non-fiction. It depends on what the topic is, whether I can include character diversity stats within that. Sometimes you just can't. <laughs> it depends what the author is writing about. Okay, so that's all the stats. I'm going to talk quickly about my least and most favourite books. So my least favourite book was the one I didn't left. This was a little bit disappointing because I've been working my way through it for quite a long time. This is the 365 day devotional commentary by Lawrence O. Richards. So this is kind of a bible study guide and I had picked it up probably a decade ago on the recommendation of a friend and I've been working on it on and off for a number of years but kind of in the autumn started trying to read through it more systematically. Was working my way through it. I had a couple of issues with just how it's put together. If you're familiar with the Bible as a book, you may know that it's separated into the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is a longer portion, it's made up of 39 individual books within it and the New Testament has 27. So if you look at a Bible and you open it up where the New Testament starts, that's between two thirds and three quarters of the way through the book. This Bible study guide devotional thing is much closer to half and half you'll see there. So what that meant was for some of the New Testament passages you'd be reading one chapter of the biblical book a day with a lot of detail about what it means and then for some of the Old Testament passages you'd be reading five or six chapters a day with very little detail. Now I have a tendency to be more interested in the Old Testament, my 
kind of area of research I'm looking into going into is Old Testament and I think there's a lot of wealth in the Old Testament but it's also a lot more difficult to understand so I feel personally that we should be spending more time looking into it than he did. Also it's just unbalanced to me, it should be an equal amount of attention paid to the different passages. This was just a minor thing but I didn't understand why he didn't involve another scholar, an Old Testament scholar, if he's a New Testament scholar, to balance it out a bit more. Then the real problem I had was when I came to one of the Old Testament passages and the devotional portion, so the bit that is like how is this relevant to your daily life, which is what I was reading this book for, came out really pro death penalty and I was like no I'm done with that. Because I'm a theology student, when I am studying theology I'm happy to engage with lots of views that are different to mine. If I'm writing an essay on something then I try and read people that disagree with me as well as people that agree with me so I can come to a really more balanced argument within the essay and so I can deepen my understanding. When I'm trying to read for Bible study devotional purposes which is like my morning time of spending time with God and reading the Bible and trying to understand it a bit better. I don't want to be reading people that are pro death penalty in that time. But yeah it just made me feel icky and I didn't want to read it anymore and so I'd got about halfway through it and then I was just like no that's it I'm done I'm not reading any more of this. So I DNF'd it at about the halfway point. And then on to my favourite book of the month and I think I've already talked a little bit about it. I'm gonna say it was A Kind of Spark by Al McNichol. For the reasons I already said, it dealt with some really difficult topics in a really sensitive way. It made the experience of autism much clearer for me from the perspective of an autistic person, the way that was explored and how that affect both Addie and her sister's daily life, the issues around the witch trials and what that actually meant for society and how do we, how should we respond to that several hundred years later and the way Al McNichol explored those themes and really brought out that those women were probably the people with mental illness or the people with neuro neurodivergence. The people that were just slightly outcast were targeted because people didn't particularly like them or didn't understand them and it just was really moving, it actually made me cry a couple of times some really big issues dealt with in this book but in a way that is really accessible for a younger audience. It's intended for middle grade and I recommend it so so highly. I'm so glad I read it. I'm so glad it was included in Ninja Book Box. I really love that book box so if you want to go and check out their website I'll try and remember to link it in the description box for you but I cannot speak highly enough of this book. I absolutely adored it and I'm excited to reread it at some point and to read more from this author. It's also published by an indie publisher called Nights Of and their aim is to try and promote underheard voices, so voices from marginalised communities in whatever shape or form. Really really highly recommend this book and this publisher and this author and Ninja Book Box and just yeah go read it. I think that's everything I want to talk about today. Yeah, let me know if you read any of the books I mentioned and what you thought of them. Let me know some of what you were reading in April. What was your favourite thing you read? Or if you just want to let me know that you have been here, leave me either a witchy or a sparky emoji because a kind of spark was my favourite book this month. You can also like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and also follow me on my social media. All that information is listed for you in the description box below. But that's it for today so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye! Mm -hmm.